In Kenya, during the recent school holidays, campaigners from Frontline Ending FGM and other grassroots organisations managed to stop 1,611 girls from being mutilated with funding of $13,000. 150 teenage girls from Korea East and West Seb counties have been saved from the cut. School holidays are traditionally the time for girls to undergo FGM, and the tactics of those determined to continue the practice are changing all the time. For example, girls can be seen here mixed into the male circumcision ceremonies to hide their impending mutilation. Dom Tiller Chesang has been a frontline activist for over 10 years in West Pokot, where over 90% of girls undergo the worst type of FGM. This is a village that has had 100% prevalence of FGM. When she was just nine, she secretly witnessed her 11-year-old cousin's mutilation and decided there and then to become a campaigner. We're going to move forward and make sure FGM comes to an end. Her work has been recognised internationally, including giving a TED talk and being honoured by Queen Elizabeth II. But fighting on the front line is hard. During this holiday that is still ongoing, we have had the most terrible and the most uh, challenging uh, period because of um, FGM comeback. Local campaigners' work is made much harder because they are desperately underfunded. Changing the mindsets of these people it is becoming very difficult because we do not have the capacity to be able to conduct like sustainable conversation. So I might go to a village and I, I can do some stuff, maybe a few months or a few days or a few weeks. And then after a while, I am short of funding. I cannot go back and reinforce that. So the moment there's a gap, that is it. The girls are cut in full swing. So because this conversation of FGM, this influence, this peer pressure, it takes place every single day in every platform. My community where FGM is happening, it is like a cut-off area. I am one of the individuals who is always in the villages, in the remote villages. I am always on motorbikes. I'm always walking. I'm sliding. You know, there's a place where I had to slide, literally had to slide because I was descending a very steep hill and you could not walk because you walk, you fall down. So I had to slide. But like the people with the with the power or with the resources, they do not want to, to, to take part in such a very challenging campaigns. So that leaves us, me, without the power, without the money, without the resources to get into the villages. And now we are here. Yes, a lot has happened. A number of girls have been cut. Yesterday I was at the police station and girls were being offloaded from a lorry. 11 girls walking with fresh wounds. And my heart is broken. I cannot do what I want to do because I don't have the capacity to do that. You get. So I have seen all these girls with their wounds, with very dirty and, you know, and with, with very frustrated uh, faces and, and everything. And there's nothing I can do to them. It has happened. And there are a number of other young girls in the police station, you know. And I'm looking at this and I'm like, for the first time, I feel like I just want to give up, you know, because... I know what FGM does to, to, to the girls in my community. And these girls are totally innocent. They don't know what is awaiting them. These girls will never be the same again. And what really pains my heart is that everybody is silent. Everybody is quiet. People look at this issue as like a cultural issue. You know, like it has happened. They're just walking by, you know, and nobody really wants to see the impact that this FGM is going to have in the lives of these girls. Despite her clear frustration, in this last cutting season alone, Dom Tiller and other local campaigners managed to save 1,611 girls from FGM. They worked closely with officials, sharing inside knowledge about where girls were at risk. They alerted the police to mass cutting and used bold tactics to engage the police, like showing them videos of a girl being cut. Later, at a press conference organised by campaigners, the police chief announced, we will make arrests if you cut your girls. There are a number of girls who have been protected, uh, but this protection is just because of the efforts that we are putting, not that we are directly rescued them, for example, but the fact that we have been moving. I went to work on 25th, I went to work on 1st of January, I have not rested. And just because to make sure that I'm assuring and reassuring girls that, you know, I'm here, we are here, don't don't be pressured, don't be forced into this, I'm always here, you can call me. So as much as we have had these incidences of girls who have been cut, but there are a number of hundreds of girls who have also been protected during this season. Thousands, not even hundreds, thousands of girls who have been protected. Because I have made sure I reached most of those villages. 
To collate accurate statistics of FGM, this time campaigners went town by town, village by village, collecting data. Tragically, 527 girls were cut, but 73 perpetrators were arrested. But it's a long and arduous task. For example, campaigners spent 90 minutes talking to the parents of these 15 girls and managed to persuade 13 of them not to cut to their daughters. Sadly, two girls were cut the following morning. I've not been able to reach all the villages, like the ones where 11 girls were brought forward yesterday who have all been, been cut. I have not been able to reach that village because like there are so many sub-counties. This court is vast. It's very vast. By the time you get to one village, it is a whole day. And that is just one tiny village, a whole day. The media grants that we have been able to get, that can only take you for a day or two days. That is to hire a vehicle because hiring a vehicle is very expensive. And you, all your money uh, is wasted on the hiring the vehicle because, because the roads are bad. So you have to pay a, a good amount of money just to hire a vehicle to get into the villages, a good vehicle that can access the villages. And otherwise, it is just, yeah. The last session I had was for of 200 girls. So whenever I go to the community, I round up all the girls who have not been cut and I like reassure them and I have not had any reports of those girls being cut again. So I know that at least over 500 girls have been protected from FGM. At the moment, I feel like... I just feel like the first thing that needs to be done, the government needs to get serious. The government need to get serious. I, I am telling you, I wrote a number of proposals to the anti-FGM board. We have to do something before the holidays. But none of that was, was funded. None of that was, was approved. Just the way there's been a mass cutting, I want to be there to be a mass, a mass prosecution, mass arrests, so that it can send some sort of insanity into the community. Number two, I want a very serious program in the schools because most of these girls are in the schools. I even try to lobby that can we please even even uh, integrate something about FGM into the education system, but nothing is happening. So the government has the answers in their hands, but they are not doing that. I know the government has the power. It has the power to protect these children, at least to some level, because I have done my part. And the part that has already been failed is not my part. That is the government part. So for me, the girls who have been protected, that is my joy and that is my my that is my my effort. That is my effort. But the one that have been failed have been failed by the government, not Domtila. To help local campaigners work together, GMC's Jeremiah Kipainoi, a leading Kenyan campaigner and one of the founders of the Frontline Ending FGM movement, has brought technology to the fore. We activists regularly meet online to share information. Okay. So to make this easier, I have developed this, the first emergency alert map which is continually updated and pinpoints where cutting is about to happen. The Facebook live uh, sessions and also the map has really played a key role in bringing us together. And this is for the first time in Korea, we are strengthening the partnership with the police. Even the police themselves and other stakeholders are able to join these live sessions and we are able to tell them what exactly is happening on the ground. When a particular village is on hotspot, then the police respond going to that village and ensuring that they beef patrol as frontline campaigners. It's a really amazing tool that has really brought another phase of ending FGM in Korea. As well as running sessions educating people about the medical dangers of FGM, frontline campaigners also get local influencers like religious and community leaders and police chiefs onto radio talk shows to remind the communities that FGM is illegal and that arrests will be made. And it's working. In Korea, 44 arrests were made during mass cutting this Christmas, compared to just five last year. We managed to rescue 513 from FGM. Perpetrators have been arrested. 38 cases are ongoing at the police. So this is a, a major landslide. Unlike the other year, the other season in 2021, it was very difficult to coordinate with the police and communicate and even do the rescue compared to this. So it has been really, really successful. Frontline campaigns rely on volunteers to do the work. They secretly film FGM ceremonies like this to provide evidence to the authorities. In Korea, monitors inform campaigners when cutting is about to happen. Basically, these are trained champions from different villages, and now we call them monitors because they monitor what happens at the village level. They are all volunteers, including even me. They are just like me as a frontline campaigner who, who has volunteered to ensure that I rally community to end FGM. People don't understand that we are doing this not because we are being driven by 
a funder or by money or by anything. That is that is their very wrong perception. Today is the 14th. I have not paid my rent because I have used every single cent from my pocket to be able to move around and save these girls. Very sad. We understand the context of our community. We understand the villages. So basically it's about supporting our workers, frontline campaigners. And I think this is something that needs to be shown to the world that if we are supported as frontline campaigners, then we are going to do amazing work. In just one month, 13 frontline ending FGM campaigners like Dom Tiller and Vincent, with the support of the police, saved 1,611 girls from the cut for a total cost of $13,000. That's $8 for a frontline activist to save one girl.